So because amines are so reactive in terms of their basicity and their nucleophilicity, they can actually make it very difficult to do chemistry on molecules that have amine functionality in them. Um, in fact, there's a uh, certain lore that surrounds um, PhD uh, chemists who, who are working on doing a, a total synthesis of a complex molecule, which is that every nitrogen in the molecule you're trying to make uh, increases your PhD by one year. Um, and, you know, there's obviously um, a little bit of, of myth involved in that, but there's a little bit of truth as well. And it can be very challenging to, to deal with um, and synthesize amine bearing molecules. So one of the things that uh, we've talked about before is that um, in, in many cases we want to, um, you know, do chemistry on other parts of a molecule and, and retain uh, certain functionality. And so what we need to do in, in certain cases is to protect a certain functional group so that we can work elsewhere in a molecule. And amines are very much in need of protection um, because uh, for the most part they're more reactive than almost everything. Um, certainly when we're, we're talking about adding acids or electrophiles uh, to a molecule. <clears throat> so how can we protect amines? Well, there's a variety of ways, but the most common way to protect amines uh, is via carbamates. So a carbamate is actually uh, a derivative of carbonic acid, right? So here's carbonic acid. Um, it's really, uh, it comes from the hydration of, of carbon dioxide. So that's carbonic acid. Um, and so what we can do is to take our amine um, of choice, whatever that's going to be, and we can essentially make an amide of carbonic acid, right? So we can make an, an, uh, a monoamide with one of these um, you know, uh, pieces here. Um, and then what we do on the other end is we then have some, some ester. So it's like sort of a half amide, half ester of carbonic acid. And this is what's known as a carbamate, okay? Uh, so carbamate. So just uh, incidentally, if we had the diester of carbonic acid, uh, this would be a carbonate. Um, and if we had the, the diamide of carbonic acid, right, where both sides have, have uh, amide pieces, that's known as a urea. Uh, but the thing that we're dealing with here is the carbamate. Okay, so <clears throat> this turns out to be useful because it's pretty much protecting that nitrogen as an amide piece. Um, uh, and so that lone pair on the nitrogen is going to be tied up in resonance with the, the carbonyl, um, which we could also do with an amide. So an amide is another way to protect an amine. Um, but it, the, the difference here is that amides, uh, as we've talked about, can be difficult to hydrolyze. You need pretty strong base to get an amide to cleave usually. And so uh, amides are less common as protecting groups for, for uh, amines. Um, carbamates are very useful because they sort of protect amines in the same way that amides do. But the difference here is we've got this R group over here, this sort of ester piece of the carbamate, which we can use as a trigger to, to deprotect the carbamate. So we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. First of all, how do we actually protect the amine? Uh, okay. Well, there's, there's three different carbamates that we want to talk about. Um, and the first one um, is uh, where the, the ester piece on the carbamate is going to be a, a tert butyl ester. Okay. So the thing that the reagent that we use here is this sort of funny looking thing. It's a, it's a dicarbonate. So it's like one, one carbonic acid that makes an anhydride with another carbonic acid. Okay, so it's a bit of a funny looking reagent. Um, this this um, tert butyl carbonyl thing is called Bach, and so this reagent is actually called uh, Bach anhydride. So Bach anhydride or BOC2O. Okay, uh, so this is the, the Bach piece. So if we just react this anhydride with an amine, just like with any anhydride, uh, we can we can uh, achieve that that reaction, and so we will get to this carbamate. Okay, so we have just um, protected that amine as the tert-butyl carbamate, um, which is usually um, abbreviated as the Bach group. So we uh, a chemist would say, I, I you know I just Bach protected my amine. Okay, so that's the Bach group, 
And what's useful here is that um, because the tert-butyl uh, group can lead to a stable tertiary carbocation, we can actually deprotect deprotect the Bach group with acid, so uh, trifluoroacetic acid, um, which I'll just draw out the, the structure here for you. CF3, so it's just trifluoroacetic acid is it's a um, acid with a you know sort of appropriate strength and that removes removes the Bach group. Okay, so you put it on with Bach anhydride and you take it off with TFA. It's very straightforward. Um, now, carbamates, uh, or at least, at least the Bach group, is going to be resistant to um, nucleophilic conditions for the most part. So you can, you can add reasonably strong nucleophiles, reasonably strong reducing agents, um, and you're not going to touch the Bach group. Lithium aluminum hydride would reduce it, but um, for the most part, you can keep the Bach group around um, under basic conditions. Okay, so let's just briefly talk about this deprotection step because, because um, you know, let's understand why acid is triggering this. Um, and the reason is, as I just mentioned, is because um, of the stability of the tertiary carbocation that you can form. So here we've got the terbutyl carbamate, and if we throw in acid, we can protonate the carbonyl. Okay. And what it can do at this point then is to um, basically lose, lose uh, that, that terbutyl group, right, to, to make itself become neutral again. So if we do that, we will then get to, uh, right, to this, this piece here. Okay. And so we, we just will have spit off a the carbocation and incidentally uh, the the TFA piece that we you know where the proton came from would would actually trap that carbocation and, and then give the terbutyl um, ester there but this piece here we all we've done is remove the alkyl group and now we've got we've got this <clears throat> sort of half amide of carbonic acid but now there's a free um, OH group here and so what this is going to do is it's actually just going to decarboxylate. Okay, it's just going to decarboxylate, and uh, very quickly this will pick up a, a second proton to give the amine, and we get to lose CO2. So that's how all of these carbamate deprotections are working. We're going to remove the R group, and then CO2 can be lost to give back the amine. Okay, so this happens with the Bach group under acidic conditions. Okay. We can change that group though, um, and to, to give ourselves access to, to alternatives. So for example, if we wanted to have um, a group that was, um, uh, could be removed under hydrogenation conditions, which would be neither, neither acidic nor basic, we could protect with this carbamate. So this is a, a benzyl carbamate, benzyl carbamate, um, and that's actually abbreviated as a CBZ group. So this would be this would be abbreviated as a CBZ. So it's a, a, a benzoyl benzoyl carbamate. Okay, um, and the reagent that that typically put this on um, is usually just going to be um, this this reagent here. So I'll just abbreviate the benzyl group as BN. Okay, so it's sort of like the half acid chloride um, of a carbonate ester. So just like with any acid chloride, those can react to put on the CBZ. And then the way that this is removed is with um, hydrogenation conditions typically. So you can hydrogenate off that benzyl group and you will remove that to give the free amine. So uh, CBZ gives you hydrogenation conditions. And incidentally, this would be called CBZ chloride, okay? CBZ chloride. Okay, so we have acid conditions, we have uh, hydrogenation conditions, and then there's there's one more um, carbamate protecting group that we will talk about, um, and this uh, is a carbamate that can be deprotected under basic conditions. Okay, so we've got our our group again that we're going to put on as usually as the the sort of um, the acid chloride looking thing, um, and then the the uh, the organic group on that that ester. Uh, side of things is is this okay so this is actually uh, uh, what's called a fluorine group okay so it's a it's a fluorine 
okay? Not to be confused with um, fluorine, the element, but, but it's a fluorine, um, meaning that it's basically a cyclopentadiene um, that has two uh, uh, benzenes attached to it, okay? Um, and this is what gives it uh, its very special properties uh, for deep protection. So once we put this on, we get to, to this situation. Okay, so here is our group, and this is so this is a fluorinyl methyl, okay, which is uh, abbreviated as so it's a fluorinyl methyl carbonyl, so it's an FMOC group. So this is this thing is FMOC chloride, okay, and then this would be an FMOC protected carbamate or or amine, so FMOC, okay, FMOC. And the way that this can be deprotected uh, is simply by treating this with base. Okay, so uh, piperidine is the typical one, and this will then return the amine. Okay, so this is under basic conditions as opposed to the acid or the hydrogenation conditions. Um, why is it that the fluorinyl methyl group can be uh, deprotected under basic conditions? And here we're going to go all the way back to our aromaticity section. So note, I'm going to just draw this just slightly different here. Okay. If you, if you look here closely, um, this fluorine group is actually a cyclopentadiene with, with two benzo uh, fusions on it. Okay. Now, um, but it, the, the key aspect here is that it does have that, um, latent aromatic character. So if we could just deprotonate here, we would form a cyclopentadienyl anion, which would be aromatic, which means that this fluorinyl group is relatively acidic. Okay, so when we throw in base, like piperidine, we can get a, a small bit of deprotonation. Okay, and so this was going to be, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna abbreviate this as R, um, which is gonna be, you know, this, this whole carbamate piece. And so when we deprotonate, we get to this fluorinyl anion. So let's just draw some donuts here. Okay, so aromatic, aromatic, and then this is aromatic and an anion in the middle. Okay, um, but that anion, so it's it forms, but it's also you know it's not really stable. And so what it can do is it can eliminate out the OR group. Okay, and that's going to then generate this piece okay uh, which is a, an example of a fulvine uh, which was you know a molecule in, in one of the problem sets um, and then what happens here is that um, the an, uh, another molecule of piperidine is actually going to add in um, and, and basically uh, after you transferred the protons is going to give you um, the the fluorinyl group attached to piperidine. Okay, so that's going to be the byproduct. And then this piece here, since we just ejected, you know, this same same type of intermediate, so whatever our mean uh, was over here, you know, we've got to that same situation, and so we're going to um, lose carbon dioxide and that's how we can get to our amine piece right so that's that's what's happening to to that that piece right there um, this this OR is what comes down and, and is that okay so that's how the the FMOC group can be deprotected under basic conditions now the FMOC is particularly important because um, this is largely how peptide synthesis occurs um, so, so peptide synthesis is, is uh, relatively well worked out. In fact, there's even machines that you can just plug in a, you know, a, a sort of a program and it'll make whatever uh, peptide sequence you want. And the way that that chemistry works is through FMOC uh, protection, deprotection chemistry. Okay. So carbamate's very useful for 
protecting the means and we can uh, sort of design um, the way to deprotect them based on the susceptibility of the uh, alkyl group, um, the, the ester group of the carbamate.